everybody, Jim Masters here, your host. Welcome to the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. It's so great to have you with us watching all around the world. We welcome our international lovely audience who celebrates what we do here, our Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series, where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation day after day with incredible celebrity friends and guests and special folks who stop by and share their passion for what they do and great conversations that we have here. And we've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows. And I thank you, 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 and everybody around the world for your support and love of what we're doing here on JMS. We've got an extraordinary return guest, a great friend of our series. If you didn't see the conversation we had last time with the incomparable award-winning and beloved singer, songwriter, and actress extraordinaire, the incomparable Rosalind Kind. Just scroll back in the archives at uh, the Gym Master Show on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, and you'll see an epic conversation that we had. And now we have another conversation in store for you because she has some new and exciting things she's been working on. She is a busy bee for sure. She's always in the studio, always on stage, always producing and writing and involved in so many great things that inspire, entertain, and make all of us feel good. Her voice is a powerhouse of love and encouragement and inspiration. She is funny. She is witty. We were just having an epic <laughs> <laughs> An extraordinary conversation, lots of laughs, putting, you know, plugging in the wires, putting it all together to make the magic for all of you. And she is a real trooper. She is a superstar. Of course, she is the sister of the legendary and incomparable Barbara Streisand. Um, we are so excited to have Rosalind Kind back with us here on the show. She is so kind to join us here. And we're going to be talking about a lot of incredible new things, including new music and a new spectacular video that has come out. And it came out at a perfect time. She's so proud of this. It came out on Valentine's Day. She's a dynamic, multi-talented entertainer. She has forged such a successful career in all facets of entertainment from critically acclaimed recordings to sold out performances that uh, just continue to resonate with people, which I think is such a beautiful thing. When you have people around the world who just love and appreciate what you love doing anyway, it's extraordinary. She has sold out performances on Broadway and top concert venues and nightclubs all over the world. Rosalind Kine recently performed with her sister, of course, Barbara Streisand during an eight city U.S. Canadian tour and a six city international tour, which brought her to acclaimed venues in the Hollywood Bowl, the O2 Arena in London, Rogers Arena in Vancouver. In addition to performing historic duets with her sister, Rosalind shared the stage with her nephew, Jason Gould, and famed trumpeter Chris Bodie. Uh, haven't had a chance to meet Jason yet, would love to one day, but I have had a chance to meet and interview Chris Bode on PBS for one of his specials a few years back. And Chris Bode is one of the sweetest guys and most talented musicians in the industry. She's a vibrant musical artist, Rosalind Kind, familiar both to national and international audience for her Headlining appearances, again, on some of the most prestigious venues, including Lincoln Center, the Greek Theater, London's Cafe Royale, the London Times noted, to say she is superb would be truly an understatement. In 2006, she made her long-awaited and received, well-received, Carnegie Hall debut with her frequent musical collaborator and friend, Michael Feinstein. And she began her performing career while still in her teens with the release of her first album, Give Me You, a whirlwind performing activity following, including engagements at the na nation's top nightclubs, acclaim from Time Magazine, three appearances on the Ed Sullivan Show, leading up to her show-stopping New York debut at the Plaza Hotel, the legendary Persian Room. And concurrent with her recording career, she's an accomplished theatrical performer on Broadway. She starred in crowd-pleasing musical review three from Brooklyn, additional theatrical credits include the off-Broadway production of Show Me, Where the Good Times Are, leader of The Pack, and Ferguson the Taylor. She's also stopped the show in a critically lauded Los Angeles production of William Finn's, uh, Finn's Elegies. And the Hollywood reporter noted Rosalind Kind sings 
like a dream. You know, she's been on television too on some of your favorite shows. She's been in the film Switched at Birth, multiple episodes of NBC's Give Me a Break. Absolutely. Throb, starring Jane Levy's, and humorously memorable turns as herself on CBS's The Nanny. This appearance also showcased her talent as a songwriter in the performance of her composition, Light of Love. She's performed in made-for-TV movies and, again, Hallmark. She's been on the Hallmark Channel. And uh, she was actually in the Hallmark movie, Ladies of the House, with the wonderful Florence Henderson, who I did have an opportunity to chat with, and, of course, Donna Mills. She takes pride in her work, also in her charitable work, Animal Welfare, Alzheimer's, AIDS-related uh, charities are very important to her. Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS and so much more. And we're very excited to let you know, and that's just the short list, folks. She has uh, debuted on Valentine's Day, a very, very special. This is a clip, a little sort of freeze frame photo of the video that she crafted and created with an amazing team. And uh, we're going to tell you about that. And that's tied to new music that she is celebrating. And this new music, if you haven't had a chance to scoop it up yet, you're going to want to scoop it up because it's going to make you feel really good. It's a creation of Look of Love and The Island. She hasn't been idle for the last couple of years. She's been producing, releasing songs such as Save the Country, Light of Love, It Only Takes a Moment, Kiss Me Now, and just in time, of course, recently for Valentine's Day, she realized a musical dream of hers with the two hits, Look of Love and The Island, resulting in a medley that celebrates love in all its forms. She's all about love and lovity, which we talk about on the Gym Master Show. And she's reinforcing the beliefs that love can be found at any age. She's proud and excited to offer this to fans and to those who love good music. Again, as I said, she really doesn't need an introduction because she's been doing this for such a long time. She has a powerhouse voice and her personality is knock them dead. There she is uh, on Sullivan and which again, she appeared on several times. She has countless uh, albums out. She's been doing it for a long time. She celebrates love and life. There she is, of course, with her mom, also a singer, and uh, Barbara, her sister, Barbara Streisand as well. And of course, as I mentioned, they performed together in an epic sold-out performance, which was one for the record books. So much great music, so many great events and things that she's been a part of. And uh, if you are a super Rosalind Kind fan, like we are here at the Gym Masters Show, then you probably have all of this music. Uh, if you don't, uh, definitely pick it up. Go to Amazon, go to Barnes & Noble, go to her website, get your copies. Of course, as I mentioned, the Broadway uh, performances as well. She was also in the musical leader of the pack, as I mentioned. And look at this. This is the look of love and the island something very, very special. And we're excited to uh, showcase this here on the Gym Masters Show live series. Yeah, I could talk about her for days on end, but uh, we're going to bring her on. We won't tell you everything because she has so much, even a great photo with Neil Sedaka. Look at that shot. One of the great legends as well. I was blessed to meet him and chat with him at Carnegie Hall when I was emceeing a concert for my friend Tim Janis which was absolutely fantastic. This is Save the Country. You guys probably know about that, but if you don't, we'll sprinkle that into the conversation as well. That is near and dear to her heart. Again, she is such a giver and she's a lover of people and a lover of the craft. This was backstage at uh, the Emmys and uh, boy, we have a good time with our great friend, Rosalind Kind, here on the Gym Master Show live series. Rosalind, welcome back to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here, my friend. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. It's great to be back. You are very, very welcome. And you have been, as I said, a busy beaver since we chatted last. When we chatted last, we had this real deep conversation. We went in so many free-flowing directions because we were in the thick of some really emotional deep times in you know all of our lives with what's gone on the last couple of years how have you 
sailed through it. And since we chatted last, what are some new perspectives on, on life and your performances going forward as a result of what you've gone through and we've all experienced in recent years? Well, to tell you the truth, it's taken me a long time to come out again after COVID. And I still took my time. And actually, after during COVID, I did some videos and put those out and everything. But it took me a while even to get to this point to make my decision to do a video with two of my favorite songs that for years I performed by themselves. And uh, it wasn't until one day when I was going on another tour, I just I said to myself, wonder what these two songs would sound like together to make a story. And we tried it out and uh, it worked so well that I did it with just piano, I did it with trio. And then not too long ago, I had it redone, fully orchestrated. And that led me to the desire to do this video. So it's a six minute mini movie actually, because it tells the story. Um, and I'm in it for the first time. It's my first time I'm producing a live mini movie. <laughs> yes. Um, and what was that? We're showing some clips here. It is absolutely extraordinary. And this is just showing you the visual. You can go, you know, to YouTube and see the whole thing. But what was this like? I watched it several times and I watched it again today. And it just truly draws you in. It's such a wonderful story. Tell us about the backstory of actually creating this. This is your baby. This is your crafting here. And it's really exquisite. Congratulations on this. Rosie. Thank you. And as you can see, we had the wonderful Tracy Toms guesting in our video. What a joy that was. She's, she's marvelous. She's incredible. And she's a great lady too. Yeah. Um, this, when we started to do to discuss the uh, discuss the storyline uh my director monique and Pagliazzo said to me well what do you see as the story Roz? where you know as far as the filming and where are you coming from with putting the two songs together and i said well i thought what i would like to do in this piece is make a statement to show women because I, after talking to several women i know there's a lot of women out there who never think they can find love again after a certain age, you know, that it's finished. And so my friend said to me, that, would, that kind of an idea would resonate greatly with a lot of women. And so I took that to heart. And so that's what I wanted to make a statement about. Young love, you know, blooming and, and sensual and that love later in later years, recognizing itself again and accepting and being open to it um, to show that you can have love at all ages. I also wanted to make a statement that love is love. Right. So in my cafe scene, I have couples that are mixed. And um, I, you know, I didn't want to push it into anybody's faces. I just wanted to subliminally, you know, people have a right to love who they want to love. Exactly. And it's okay. It's good. Love is love. And love, right. everything begins and ends with it. And we need it. We need to celebrate it. Yeah. You know, it, it's not only visually stunning. I mean, the production value is high end. Uh, the music is extraordinary. But I'm sure as people see this, they say, oh my God, this is so believable and real. Are those two together? <laughs> <laughs> they were wonderful. I had a brilliant, wonderful cast. Um, and, and my team also was phenomenal. Um, <clears throat> Monique Impagliazzo, Malik Hanna, my co-producer, Monique, my director, and our incredible DP, Justin Nodal. Mm -hmm. uh, it was my first time working with them all on uh, my first production project. And um, what was that feeling like, Rosalind, your first production project yeah. to oversee it? And to, uh, is this, did it give you a taste of wanting to do more yeah. things like this? Oh, yes. I said yeah. right away, what would you do next? Monique said to me, what do you want to do? I said, I know I had such joy doing this with joyous people. 
yeah. involved, that all loved the process, all loved being there. They all came from their hearts. They all were thrilled to be part of this process, and you could see it in the work. Everybody was happy and loving. That's what I like. That's how I like to work. I don't like to work with animosities, with narcissism. I can't, I can't deal with that. But everybody on this project couldn't have been more dear, could not have been more dear and talented. Yeah. And I loved them all. I, I came to love them all. Um, and that was a very joyous endeavor for me. How long did it take to, from the first idea of putting it together to completion, how long did it take? Well, I'll tell you, we first, I first discussed it with Monique. We were at a dinner party and somebody said, you know, Monique Roz wants to do a video. So it was mentioned there, but she was busy doing a video to somebody else. It turned out to be Malik, Hannah, my, my, co my producer by my side. And I'm going, and um, so we discussed it. And the first time we actually sat down seriously after she was finished filming the previous video it was May, well, March 9th of last year. So that was the beginning of the discussion for this project. Mm -hmm. She brought in Malik because they had worked together before. And she said he would be wonderful. He also gets great deals. <laughs> so yeah. you know, the producer, get your, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so he came on and they brought on Justin, who they've worked with. And phenomenal, phenomenal director of photography. The cinematography is just luscious it's luscious it really is and and it's such a beautiful story of young love and then sort of rediscovering that love as time has gone on i mean that, that's such a beautiful thought yeah. you know and it happens oftentimes where you know that never happens uh where you just never have that in your life and you you wonder mm -hmm. what would it have been what could it have been that's such a beautiful what was the inspiration for the idea of even the story of the video and of the music well i myself was married when i was younger and it yeah. didn't last right. i didn't base this on my own life though but i i know kind of those feelings yes and, um and i was divorced not you know less than a year even after my marriage, but there was always love there. Even though we didn't see each other for a while or whatever, there was always love. Uh, there was always a friendship. Um, I, I myself never had young, young love. So, you know, I lived through movies. I lived through the love stories I went to see. And I'm, a very, I'm very much romantic. And so the idea that I wanted to fulfill was maybe my own yearning. Because today, as an older woman, I still have not gotten remarried again. I still but I also have another journey that I'm on that uh, was uh, realized when I had an, uh, a 1984 past life regression. So I learned at that time why I'm here. So I'm not going crazy about not having one-on-one -on -one in my life. Don't think I'm not attracted to it and I wouldn't right. like the right person to come in. Right. You know, but I have other obligations that spirits have told me, the universe has told me I have to work on while I'm here. And that's to bring other people's hearts together. Exactly. To love back into life and to bring compassion and joy and lift everybody's spirits and to create a world of harmony. That's, you know, we talk about that a lot on our show and I, I'm a, I'm a, truly all about that anyway in just everyday life. And you talked about that last time on our show. That's really deeply, deeply important for you, isn't it? A harmonious life, people coming together, be, people being creative, being kind to one another loving to one another, allowing each other to talk, but then also listen, look for ways to bridge gaps. It's extraordinary um, that that is so incredibly important 
to you because people know that they feel that from you, from your music, from conversations, from stage performances, that there, it isn't just about the entertainment. You really want to leave people feeling with deep thoughts about the meaning of life. And like you said, a lot of people go through life and they don't know their purpose. They don't know why they're here. They don't know what it's all about, Alfie. And you've been able to sort of, and it's life is an ongoing journey, well, but well, you well, can well. figure some of it out, right? Mm -hmm. And still, you know, every day is a new journey. There's more lessons to be learned. You can never stop learning. You can only hopefully become better for all your trials and tribulations, and then all the successes or everything that goes right is that much of a joy, especially since you knew the other side. Yes. So you can't expect everything to be hunky-dory all through your life. There are trials, there are boulders in your way, and you've got to push them out, and you've got to come out in a way that you're not bitter, but that you're a better person, and you've learned what it is you don't want and what it is you want, and to also share. How are some of the ways that you do that when life does get a little crazy, a little frustrating and, you know, things are just topsy turvy a little bit. How, what are some of the go-tos for you? Do you meditate? Do you walk along the ocean? What are some things you do to balance out all of the energy and activity and the craziness of life? I listen to music, music dear to my heart because now even in the car, I'll sing with it. You know, songs that I know and love. Um, I just, I haven't walked a lot since COVID, but I always love to walk. And uh, I, even in nature, it doesn't have to be the water, but the water is beautiful. It was great when we were filming. I loved it. Um, but nature is very healing. Yes. So yeah. anything that you can do in nature, even eat. Have a, have a picnic <laughs> right outside instead of indoors. You know? Right. <laughs> it brings a, a sense of joy and oneness with uh, with with God in a way when you're you know when you're outside because that's His creation and we're meant to take care of it. We're meant to keep it strong and keep it healthy and vibrant so that the next generation can come and enjoy and grow up loving and healthy and happy. That's so very very true. Um, of course, you grew up back east in, in Brooklyn. How much did growing up in New York and in Brooklyn influence your, your perspective, your passion for life, your energy? Obviously, you know, you've got to get through and make it through and, and plow through sometimes when you are growing up in a big city. And uh, that can make things richer. Maybe you really appreciate it maybe a little bit more because you've had to work so hard and you've absolutely worked extremely hard to get where you are. You've got a, you know, obviously a famous sister who is also beloved, but you've crafted out your own thing, which I think is absolutely extraordinary along the way. Oh, thank you. Not an easy job. <laughs> How do you follow a living legend? <laughs> You know, years ago, uh, when I first started out, uh, they wrote about me in New York and they said something about as, as great, as talented as I was, it seemed like to get the attention myself, I would have to jump off the Eiffel Tower singing the Queen of Rome. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> far off. <laughs> but the bottom line is I have such joy in in looking into the eyes of my audience, yes, into their souls and sharing mine with them, that that doesn't matter. I know that that exists. I, I am one of my sister's biggest fan. I mean, there's nothing, you know, I love her. I grew up with her. I look up to her and she deserves everything that has been bestowed upon her. Absolutely. And, uh, God blessed her, you know? She right. Her. And um, and I couldn't be more proud of her. Well, Absolutely. And I still want to have my own, but it's in another way. Right. You know, so that I can still honor my sister and still know that I, I want to feed my audience. I want to feed the people out there who need to hear God's message of love and light. That's exactly right. That need right. unity, that need chances, that need their life to be better. Exactly. To have better lives to share a little bit. To That's make, right. You know, why? Sometimes I wonder whether it would be better if we didn't have money and you bartered. It would be more equal. 
people wouldn't be power hungry money you know it's like just to bring lives and hearts together and to care about your neighbor and mm. to to bless your differences and try to understand them and share them and yet also bless the things that are similar where do you think that comes from where do you think that inspiration and that true understanding of the richness and the importance of humanity comes from for you, Rosalind? From my spirituality. Um, and from knowing, you know, I'm only one of many. I'm a tiny, on this earth, I'm a little spot of sand. We all are. Really, our existence, really, is so minute. But together, in the right way, doing the right things and loving each other, we can make it a beautiful whole world. We could have heaven right here on earth. Why wait? That's right. Exactly. Yes, we can. And we should look at it in that way. And I think then things would be a little bit sweeter and, and kinder. And you're obviously very in tuned with emotional intelligence and empathy and compassion for others because you're so involved in, in charitable causes that you believe in and you've been very supportive. That's another part that maybe people don't realize as busy as you are making the music and making the magic, you've always helped those that, uh, that need it. And I think that's a beautiful thing to be able to carve that time out, Rosalind, to do that for the there's, good of others. There's so much every day, something else, everybody has so much that needs help, that needs, you know, I don't think we can conquer it all. It takes all of us to also help everybody. Um, because there's just so much going on in the world that we have to get, we have to get rid of the darkness. For instance, we have to bring light back into life. Yeah. We have to get rid of hatred and disparity. We have to become a better human race and there's room. We can all be joyous in, in making that happen. And it will just lighten up your heart. Right. Why go around with darkness, with heaviness on you? Yeah, it's, it's nonsensical. Absolutely right. You know, because life is so short and so precious, as we know, and uh, the time goes by fast. The clock waits for nobody. So make the most of it. And, and that's a beautiful thing. And I think it's one of the reasons of many why people love you so much, because you're so real. You wear your heart on your sleeve. You're so affable and authentic. You're just a pleasure to be around and you make others feel good, which I know is sort of like a boomerang because it comes back at you as you inspire others, you're being inspired too, right? And, and I'm very fortunate these days because I have so many light-filled people coming into my life now. Yes, right. Me, everybody on my project, God bless them. They are such beautiful human beings, beautiful souls. And I'm privileged and honored to know each and every one of them. Your mother was a singer as well um, in New York. Tell us about your mother. What was your mother like? My mother, she was the soprano in the family, but she right. never went into the business. She came up, you know, her parents were the immigrants who emigrated here from That's Russia. Right. And there, there was always fear. So, you know, and then in her era, it was also, uh, you know, you can't go into that business. It's a quote, bums business, mm. a woman, you know, all the way they looked down upon it. Yeah. But my mother was also, you know, she had a lot of fears. She was raised with a lot of fears in her life. So she was scared of us even going out there and that we're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. you know? And so things that can be mistaken for her not caring or wanting you to go get an education or whatever, it was because of her fear that if something shouldn't, you know, come to be the way you want it to be, have something to fall back on. I got to understand that as much as, you know, I had to hear this other stuff. And she was, my mother was never a braggart. She didn't expect a lot. She was a hardworking woman who had a hard life. Um, and, but she was there. She was there when you were sick. She was there, you know, when you were, we always had food on the table, everything, you know, I felt like, she cared, but she just, she wasn't like a humongous energy as far as, um, she, she was proud. She was proud, but Humble. quiet. Yeah. And she always said, you know, I don't, I would be out with her with some friends, with their mothers and the mothers of those kids 
that I knew would be bragging, oh, my this and my that. And my mother sat there, mom. Hmm. She said she never bragged about us. She just said, let, let everybody come to me. Right. Right. It wasn't easy with the compliments. I'll tell you, you could come home with an A report card and she would right. just sign it and give it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> but food was on the table, clothes were on your back. And um, and I, I realized that she was a product of her upbringing. Yeah. And none of us are 100 percent. You know, all of us have our our differences with our families and our parents at times. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you still grow to understand each other. Exactly. When did you first realize, and were you the one who realized it, or did others realize it for you, that you had this gift, this talent early on, and then wanted to sort of pursue it and make the most of it? Well, we had a musical home. You know, mom sang, my sister sang. And I, you know, and I, I was a little kid when I started singing with the television shows like Davy Crockett. I would sing the theme to Davy Crockett. <laughs> And, um, and then other television shows and everything. I just had fun. It, was, it gave me joy. Yeah. It gave me joy. So I always sang. And then as I got older and I got to know more shows and more songs and when I got to see Broadway and you'd come home with an album, I would do the whole album, men and women, even in duets. <laughs> you would do you were your, your own, right? Yeah, I, I had television shows that I loved and I would write them in my head a scenario. You know, pretend I had a big pretend world. I would write a scenario in my head, putting myself into that into that piece. For instance, I, I used to love a show when I was a kid called Fury about a horse, and it was an adopted kid, and Peter Graves was his father, and then there was Pete, the the crack the crunchy, uh, guy who was the cook. But I wrote myself into that as Jim's wife, and I would act it. <laughs> I, mean, I spent you know my my young years. I I spent a lot of time alone in my my world of created your own world creative. yeah yeah and then, and then you know in eighth grade because i was really good at math i thought well maybe i would become a math teacher because i was good at math i was marking my teacher's papers you know but um what? <laughs> but it was singing and music that brought me the most the most comfort the most it was most the most soul filling what were you listening to early on? In addition to singing the themes and what you heard in movies and television, what what was on that record player early on for you? The, oh, well, some I, of the music you were exposed to first. I was exposed to the Motown sound, you know, mm. in the early '60s, and the English Invasion. Yeah. The Beatles. I was a Beatlemania. I was one of those women that got on a chair. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I, George was my favorite Beatle. And I remember when my sister was doing Funny Girl in oh, London, yeah. and she she wrote she wrote me back. She wrote me. She said, "You'll never guess who touched my shoulder today. You'll never guess who touched my shoulder today." They were online to meet the Queen, and it was George. <laughs> and so she brought me home uh, an autographed picture from the, all four of them. Um, no, I, I love the Beatles. I love Petula Clark. I love Dusty Springfield, um, mm. Stella Black, uh, yes. Marianne Faithful. Uh, uh, and all the English groups that came on after the Beatles, you know, and some of the ones we had here in America, the Dave, and the Dave Clark Five. And I wasn't so much a Stones person. I, they mm -hmm. were a little too wild for me, for my persona. <laughs> but um, but I, I did, that was my big music era. And then I was influenced too by the people my sister listened to, because I, I would hear Mathis, who I grew to love, mm -hmm. and Lena Horne, and you know, so that opened me to the other uh, arena. And of course, theater opened me to theatrical world. So I enjoy it all. I can't pigeonhole it, you know? It's really uh Great exposure really cool. to everything, right? Early on for you. Yeah. And I you mentioned. I can't say that I'm, I'm in tune with a lot of the music today. But yeah. in my youth, that was, my youth, that was when I had my transistor radio. Oh, yeah in my ear i every once a week i went to mel's record rack at the junction and bought another record you know that was my teenage years i was like so into that i would play dandy dan daniels in the top 25 at four o'clock every day doing <laughs> you know as an adult i'm a little more 
a little more inward and certain in my in my likes and stuff. Yeah, a little more focused yeah. and right. <laughs> you yeah. of course you mentioned the Beatles and the Beatles. There was a very important moment for them when they appeared on the Ed Sullivan show. You did too. And did what too. was that experience like? Oh my gosh. And I was the day that I went was a snowstorm. Was it really? Uh, yeah, there was a blizzard. I had a walk to the uh, Ed Sullivan Theater from 57th between 8th and 9th to 52nd <laughs> and Broadway <laughs> in the snow on the ice to get there. But it, it had a it had a positive. People were stuck at home. Yeah. Except for those that were stuck in the subway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was it was very enlightening and frightening at the same time. I, it was my first time. I didn't know where to look at the camera. Do I look at the red light or do I look in the lens? And I, right. I kept telling myself, I'm going cross-eyed. Guys, you're going cross-eyed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was definitely a highlight in my life, a beginning, especially since it started with the Hollywood Palace vying for my debut along with Ed Sullivan. And I, they had to have an arbitration to see who won. So here I'm just out of high school and they're fighting over me. Wow. And Ed Sullivan won and Hollywood Palace wouldn't put me on because they were after the debut. Wow. You see there's politics everywhere. <laughs> there is. After you made that appearance on Sullivan, then of course the exposure because he was, the numbers he pulled in on CBS for viewership were extraordinary at that time. Uh, did that sort of kick things into gear faster too, that appearance? Yeah, I guess it did. And the day I, I did another taping the next day following my appearance on February 9th, 1969. And then uh, I flew out to my, one of my first gigs after breaking in gigs in Connecticut uh, to uh, the Hungry Eye and did my first nightclub appearance. And at that time, Lee Holdridge was my musical director. And I was on the bill with Mel Torme. I came in, Mel had, had was working with Trio. I came in with 12 pieces and he got to use them. <laughs> wow. But, you know, it was just, that's what my, my thing, my, my music uh, called for. But um, yeah. that was the beginning. And from there, I went on tour with my album with RCA. They took me to a, like a 10 city tour throughout. What was so funny is because I, I thought to myself, why are they spending all this money? Half the time we would go to these parties and they didn't even know who you were or who the party was for. They just came to drink. <laughs> Aren't there better ways to spend the money? <laughs> <laughs> but there's RCA introducing Rosalind yeah. Kind, huh? Yeah. Wow. That's that's exciting. What was that like for you? I mean, now here it's rolling even more for you, which is extraordinary. Well, you know what? I was new to it and I'm and I'm very, you know, I'm not really out there. I'm a shy persona. Right. I'm not like I don't bulldoze when I come into a room. It's very right. Different. And it took me a lot of years to, you know, just shine my light because of that. Um, but it, it was exciting, but I never Left my feet, never left the ground. Which is terrific, isn't it? You know, I I mean, even when I was with ABC Paramount and Joyce Selznick, may she rest in peace, said, you may never have to play another nightclub as long as you live, you know, because I was taking the scene away from the two guys I was reading with who had worked with this script for several weeks already. And she said to me, you may, may never have to leave the ground. I said, please, Joyce, I like my feet on the ground where they are. And, you know, what is to be will be. I don't want to, you know, I let, but I get that from my mother. It's like, you don't talk about something until it happens. You know, it's like, not, I don't know how to, to be that way. Right. Right. Yeah. Which I think, like you said, it, it keeps your feet on the ground. It keeps you grounded, rooted, uh, as balanced as possible with that underpinning of understanding of, what it's really all about, which I think is a terrific thing because, you know, early on when you get that kind of fame and adulation and attention coming your way and, and rather swiftly, all well earned because of your extraordinary talent and your personality and people just wanting to have you as part of what they're working on, uh, it can, you can get swept up in that and swept away into directions that aren't necessarily 
the most positive for you. Yeah. So you, it's you've been it's able to true. keep it's that, you know, train on the track, which is very inspiring to hear. Because even when I went to France, I was invited to be on a Charles Aznavour television special. It was done by a German production company, and we taped in Cannes. Um, at that time, the Olympia in Paris asked for me to play there. And in all honesty, I had to say, you know what? You're looking to book Barbara Streisand's sister. You're not looking to book me. And I'm not ready for that. Right. I just, you know, I have to be honest. Of course, where are they now? <laughs> <laughs> where are they now? It's funny how that works, right? Right. <laughs> It's, yeah, <laughs> we uh, we we've pulled up, you know, um, some wonderful photos. Uh, this is spectacular. This shot, and again, we thank well, Rosalind. Night, and, night in the recording studio at RCA. Uh, wow, I had a, an afternoon at noon, and then the second time was at night, and I wore that little blouse, and that was a a fall. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's um, it's such a great shot, and this one too. Oh, that was the back of my album cover. Look at those those uh, thighs. Yep. I believe that. <laughs> the yeah. bulky's on me. <laughs> Look at those boots, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! That's such a great shot mm -hmm. too. As is this. Oh, thank you. That was a nineteen eighties type shot, I think. That was eighty. That one, huh? The 80s, or the maybe the late 70s, late 70s, I think. And this one was from a Vogue, Vogue magazine. That was Vogue. What look was that? Eyebrows. You look at those eyebrows. You believe I... the eyebrows I used to have? <laughs> I but they, they look like I had to, had to thin them out. I didn't thin them out until 1981 when I did Ferguson the Taylor, because my friend Bud Court said to me. You've got to thin the eyebrows. They're taking up your whole face. You know? <laughs> You're so expressive. So. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Look at this one we dug up. This is cool. Now, I believe you're signing autographs and all here. Yeah, that was signing autographs. And that was from Ferguson the Taylor that we did at the Beverly Hills Playhouse here in 1981. We were working out the, the script and it was like a three hour play and we had to bring it down. It was a musical. It was fun. It had double entendres and I played Sadie and we came in, you know, to the port saying, you know, uh, welcome to America. We were past the Statue of Liberty. It started with that. There was a gypsy in it. There was Nathan's hot dogs. It was <laughs> you know, a haberdasher. I mean, it was a fun show and we were hoping to take it to Broadway, except that it was at the same time that Rags came out. Oh, yeah. So, and for it, because it was a fabulous, you know, and everybody would leave the Beverly Hills Playhouse and they, oh, there's Sadie. They didn't say Rosalind Khan. They would say, there's Sadie. They go Sadie. Right. You know, it was yeah. a lot of fun. You know, did do you like that? I know that you've had an opportunity. You've been on television shows. You've been in film. You've been on stage. Um the singing and songwriting people know you so much for, but you've also balanced it with this wonderful acting career. Do you love that as much? I do. Yeah. I, I, I would love to do a comedy series. I would love to do a comedy. And then I, you know, Milton could You sell would it. be incredible in that. Has anybody yeah. well, thought of it or approached you or? Guessed it, but I haven't started my own. Actually, there was a plan that if this other pilot I did, uh, with Shelley Long, Barry Van Dyke, Stephen Keats, may he rest in peace, and Gretchen Weiler, may she rest in peace. If that had gone on the air, I would have been a spinoff with Archie Hahn as the best the rototype girlfriend, and Archie Hahn was Barry oh. Van Dyke's friend. Wow. So that would have been fun, but didn't now, happen. Now, is this something where maybe you – have thought of writing your own or getting a team together and creating your own and yeah. starring in it, you know? Like Fran Drescher did. She had her own idea and brought it, you know? And you were on that too, the nanny. And give me a somebody. break. And all. <laughs> I need to. I would love that. I, you know, the, when I did television, when I did the pilot, I went down two closing sizes from Monday till the day we taped. 
because of the adrenaline. I had such a blast. I can imagine. Yes, you would be fantastic yeah. in a sitcom. That would be, I, I, you got my vote. That would be, I would be one of those rating points. <laughs> that's Jim. I could tell it's Jim. One of the rating points. Uh, no, that would, you would be spectacular in that because you just, you, you're so funny and witty and quick. There's a quickness to it that I think is, which I get, you know, you know, coming also from New York, from originally from out east on Long Island. It's like, a New York thing, isn't it? Yeah. And my father originally from New York City, my mother from New England and her side of the family, my father's side, the New York side. So there is sort of a, you know what it is? It's a, it's a lot of observational humor. You can be a, in a supermarket line and come up with a whole storyline of what you're seeing you know you know what he's really saying to her uh you know what she's really saying to him and you could come up with quick quips based on life around you <laughs> have you ever thought of doing stand-up <laughs> no but i you know sometimes i it comes out in my show because just yeah something happened in the audience and something you know was that you didn't expect and sometimes i pick up on it <laughs> You react to you what you think. see, right? And that's it's, that's a gift. It really is a it's it's a spectacular gift. I I dug this up because I had an opportunity to to meet him at Carnegie Hall when I emceed an event at Carnegie Hall, um, and he is one of the sweetest guys, Neil Sedaka. Oh my god, a I love wonderful you. shot of the two of you. Yeah, this was at a, a, a celebrity uh, Brooklyn event that they yeah. were having. Yeah, so all of us people that were born in Brooklyn, right? In show business, we had, and we would adopt. I think that year we adopted Mitzi Gaynor into the. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Neil, I sang one of his songs. I, I, Neil Zadol, one night when I was singing at the Catalina, I got strep throat mm. and he came up and sang a few numbers. Wow. Really. That's, that's, that's a class act, you know, yeah. that yeah. really is a class act. And yeah. yeah. And he's still, he's still doing his thing too, which is extraordinary. As still, he you know yeah. what? As long as you're able, don't, don't retire. Don't live, retire. Live, work, make yourself happy. Exactly you know, right. Just keep doing it. To, to be alone and to not have anything to do is wish get, as we say. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's so right. Hey, look at this. I love the cover of this too. It's a great, you know, album, but I love the cover of this. Tell us about that one. And that's such a, just a beautiful shot. You know, your oh. eyes can melt icebergs in the Arctic <laughs> Circle. <laughs> They really Not can. Really? really? I, don't I think a lot of people would agree. <laughs> <laughs> Just the eyes, you know, the eyes are the window of the soul. Yeah, so you're definitely. very, very expressive. I know you were talking about the eyebrows earlier, but yeah. your eyes are very expressive. That's a, I love the cover of that. Tell us about this one. This one was, this was my second album. Yeah. After With Me You. Mm -hmm. And it had song, I had uh, Osnivore's song on there, Love It Last You Have Found Me. Yeah. I had a song called The Playground. Um, I had Taxi Man on there, I thought we, which was like kind of a political statement. Um, what else did I have on there? I said, um, I can't even remember what's on the back of that album. The Playground. Um, Playground was on that, yeah. Um, Please Take Me Home, which my somebody used recently for a picture of a puppy on Facebook. They use that in my recording, a friend of mine. They found a dog and they were looking for a home and they played my my song, Please Take Me Home. Oh, how <laughs> cool is that, huh? Yeah. That's um, great when your music is used, you know, in other yeah. things. You had this single too. Look at that yeah. one. That was my French record deal with Wea International that I had for a little time. If I did a few things with them. Yeah. You know, Fits, put it on. If, you know, if it sticks, keep it strong. If the love, hold on tight. But if the love fits, you better put it on me tonight. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's a cappella. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm singing very slightly, you know. Yeah. Here's a good one, too. Sad. Yeah. yeah. 
What was I the inspiration think. for that one? Um, it was a song that I was given and it was about love again. Yeah. You know? I love songs about love. I said, I'm a romantic. Um, but it was like a love, a love split, you know? Yeah. Right. Um, that, but you know, that was the kind of song that they loved in France. Oh, they absolutely. Like yeah. Yeah. There's another one. It's a beautiful yeah. day. It's a beautiful day. It was a happy song that was on my very first album. This was a new rendition of it. And it's yeah. in my show to this day. Isn't that <laughs> awesome? <Yeah. laughs> Do you, uh, are you touring? Do you have concert yeah. dates coming up? Are you... I, haven't, I haven't planned any yet. Uh, I'm actually using, for me, my video is my entrance back into the realm. Oh, that's great. Is, I'm hoping, you know, I'm looking forward to getting some gigs and putting together a show really inevitably that's about kindness and loving and bringing people's hearts together. And I'd love to do that in a major way. Yeah, that's that. In bigger stage than just not a cabaret. Um, when, when you do that and you get those dates and everything lined up, East Coast, West Coast, Middle, let us know. We'll have you come back too and we'll tout that because that, I think... That's going to sell out everywhere. I think people are from your mouth to God's ears, honey. You're right. To God's ears. Craving, they're craving that. They need that, and you are, and always have been, a, a, one of the ambassadors. And I'm so plugged into it too, so I'll be right there cheering mm -hmm. in the front row. But you're such an ambassador of it, and on and off air, in and out of the studio, on and off stage. It isn't just something that's part of branding. It's who you are. That's how you live your life. And I think that's, again, one of the things that connects people to you, Rosalind, is they know that this isn't just uh, marketing copy scripted. It, it's you living you, which I think is such a, a beautiful way to be. You know what I mean? Thank you. As you do yourself, Jim, you're very much just like me in that way. That's it. So Come my way. <laughs> you have to get everybody else to do the same thing. Exactly. Exactly. But you are the leader of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> like that segue? <laughs> Look at this. And the musical leader of the pack. We mentioned it earlier, but here's the shot of it. Now, this was cool. Tell us about this. This was uh, Calgary, Canada, Stage West Dinner Theater. Yeah, and uh, I was in it. I was in it, and I was star starring opposite. Um, oh God, he's. I'm looking at him right in his face. Andrew Stevens. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Stella Stevens' son. Oh yes. And he at the time was uh, on Dallas. That's right. And then I, I went there because we were on strike, and the author came in to go to do this this musical, and so I went. And it was a great run. And I was even part of the stampede of uh, uh, pancakes in the air and, uh, <laughs> and the parade and uh, it, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And I loved it because I could find crystals there. It, a very metaphysical town and beautiful weekends. You would go on your day off up to um, uh, Lake Louise and Banff. Mm. Right away. And we were extended. We were extended a month past our original date to be there. But it was great. I, it was my first time in a hot air balloon. Wow. You did that, huh? Yeah. What was that like for you? Because not everybody would do that. It was great. Yeah. It was great. Only I think we were going, we were like going slowly into Indian territory. So we had to force it down. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice. And then you come off and they have some champagne and little pastries for you. Wow. And you come down. But that was fun. Um, do you like to go on retreats? Do you have you been on retreats? You know, where you go away for a little bit and you meditate and you. I would love that. Yeah, I yeah. love. I haven't done many of those things, but I love that. I love. I love sound baths. Have you done a sound bath? I haven't. No, I've done. Well, um, I've done a. I've got in a um, salt cave. Mm -hmm. I was actually on a TV shoot, and we were featuring the salt cave, and it was down in um, Fairfield County, Connecticut. And they invited us to come and they said, well, we don't want you to just, you know, film it and just interview and talk about it. We want you to come in and, you know, 
sit and immerse yourself and we're all sort of in a circle and it was it was it was a himalayan salt and it was really it was cool pink. it was pink yeah pink right yes <laughs> right like the turtleneck yes. <laughs> it was really I, you come out of that just so I don't know. I, I'm an ocean person, you know, right. here on the East Coast. I swim, surf, boogie board. I'm always in the ocean. Maybe it's the salt. It's just like you talk about the grounding, the the tide coming in and out. I talk about the ocean. I should be a spokesperson for the ocean. I'm always talking about it and always in it and near it. It just brings great life and uh, re-energizing and rebooting for me. So when mm -hmm. I was in the salt cave, it was sort of a similar experience. Have you ever done anything like that in the salt cave? No, I mean, I've been really to the cool. Dead Sea in Israel. What was that like? I actually didn't go in. You know, unfortunately, it's not as high as it used to be. It's like dwindling. But the people would go in there to heal, and you would float. That water, water you float in it, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But here, I love sound baths. I love, I used to go to meditation every day for the longest time. I haven't been in a while in a group situation but recently went to a sound bath that knocked my socks off literally oh. I feel like my brain came out somebody juggled it and made it better and put it back in <laughs> and you felt like because you're it's vibrations of sound at the sound of the first bowl oh that's right you know, yes with the rotation my back was tight and as soon as i heard the gong on the first bowl my back relaxed into the floor into the mess. did it really and my but i would feel all kinds of feelings throughout my body through this whole hour and a half. Was it like but a it tingling unreal. sort of? And unreal. Just all kinds of things. And warm and straight. It was the strangest thing. But when you got up, you was like so dizzy. We couldn't even, my, my had my, uh, my DP was there. Malik was there. Justin Malik, my friend, David, David brought his friend. And that was their first time. Uh, David and I had done sound baths before, but this one was quite monumental. And it's all because of the vibrations of what's being played. Because mm. uplifting like 528. Yeah. The love vibration. And then it's 432. And all of these bowls and gongs. And ah, oh, but the feeling that you get. And yeah. sometimes you get visions. Yes. People fall asleep. Yeah. Have you ever done Qigong? I was taught Qigong uh, when. I was at WNET 13 PBS in uh, New York, which I've done, as I mentioned, I've done, I've been working with PBS for years as a host. And we were at WNET 13 at uh, the Tisch Studios at Lincoln Center. And they brought in the Qigong master from California, Lee Holden. And it was for his public television nationwide series of specials. And they wanted us to you know, get into the actual exercise, clothing and all in the studio to practice Qigong with him. And I'd always heard about it and I watched his shows on public television, but hadn't practiced it. And it's really incredible, all about breath and balance, as opposed to like, rah, 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 go do 50 laps and, you know, do an Ironman kind of thing. This is about the breath and the stability and the balance. It is really something cool have you ever uh, I gone into that, I, should do it. I should do it it's really yeah, yeah. yeah. working in these frenetic careers like this how, you gotta have a place to sort of balance yeah. that's yeah. what that's what i go to sedona for so oh, i balance i go to sedona i go yeah. to the stupa i do my prayers i put a few coins and i meditate and i go to the labyrinth and i go to all the high energy points there I come home so relaxed and so at peace and so centered that when I come home, I don't want to go out. <laughs> you're, a, you're like, how do we, how do we extend this feeling at home? <laughs> I'll return the texts, the emails tomorrow. Right now, I'm still flying high in the zone from this. Oh my God. You, uh, well, I would imagine being, you know, uh, in a setting like this, filming the video, this is uh, one of the California beaches, I'm presuming, where you did this? Yes, Broad Beach. This is Broad Beach. Be we beautiful. Also Look at the sun. I yeah. mean, God. The sunset. And the kids, we filmed at uh, El Matador. Uh, 
And you, uh, which is kind of cool, you ran into your friend Pierce Brosnan while filming on location at the beach, right? That was that was a shock. He's not my friend. He's just the sweetest guy. I yeah. sat next to him at the Staples Center during one of my sister's run-throughs. He yeah. He on a tour. And he was so, such a sweetheart. And Malik had, I was like totally focused into the camera. Yeah, you were doing week. your thing. Yeah. You were doing your thing. And then Malik says, oh, there's Pierce Brosnan. Yes, Pierce. I said, what? What? And I'm looking all over. Wait a minute, whispers, whispers. I saw him. Pierce, Pierce. And he, he turned around. He stopped. We took a picture. And everybody that was on the beach with us that day got to meet him. And they were absolutely thrilled. And he couldn't have been lovelier. Isn't that wonderful to have that? Just, you know, divine intervention in a way that happened yeah. like that. <laughs> um you know, The Look of Love was featured in a Bond film, Casino Royal. Tell us about that. I, you know what? It wasn't the one that, that he was in. No. He wasn't right. in that one. Right. But it was featured in the film. That's what I hear. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> but they told me, do you know that it was featured in the Casino Royale? Really? I, I didn't remember because there were so many. Every Bond film had a... I mean, I still love Shirley Bassey. A, dis a distinctive. I love, you know, I love. That's where I think I get my my dramatic moments from. I love Bassey's drama. Now, Tracy, was it Tracy Toms does a little uh, cameo? Yeah. She, we, we, asked her fa we asked her a favor if she would be one of our couples there. And she did not hesitate for a minute. She's uh, so lovely. She's lovely and so talented in so many ways. It was such a joy to have her on set. What was it like in that process of casting the younger version of yourselves? Well, I'll tell you how how this my team did it. They went and did the initial, you know, looking, and then they brought me the best candidates, and then I met with them and talked to them and took pictures with them. And we picked, I really felt so great about Jules, Juliana Angaro. She somehow looked like me. And uh, she and she was a dancer. And I wanted somebody in that role that danced because I wanted the sensuality. I wanted her not to be afraid to move and you know, really show the sensuality of the moment. Um, and she was she was absolutely perfect. And everybody, you know, it's so funny, everybody was saying, Why wow, I almost thought that was you. You know, right, like incredible, and then, um, and Hunter, the younger lover, he was the last guy we saw. Hunter Gray, right? Hunter yeah. Gray, and yeah. he's studying yeah. dermatology, but he was wonderful. He was what they were so perfect, and then there was Buzz, Buzz Lear, who, um, I just the minute I saw him, first of all, I thought, you know, you look like Ralph Waite, yes, Ralph. right. You know, That's what I thought when I saw it. Yeah. So he had these gorgeous blue eyes that you could get lost in. And just sitting there and talking to him, he was so easygoing and easy. When we took a picture, he was so relaxed and mm. easy and fun. I said, That's it. This is it. But they did the initial hunting and brought me what they thought I would love to pick from. That is so cool, huh? When yeah. you had that opportunity to, to really think about it and, uh, you know, it also, the video also delivers a subliminal message that love is love in all forms. A message that uh, couldn't be, you know, expressed loudly enough these days. And you do in this beautiful video. And music. Thank you. It means a lot to me to get that out there. It really does. I You're right. The world is in such a bad space. It's very hard. It's just, we've never been in this place before, and we have to do our best. All of us angels of light have to come together. And, it, yes. And get rid of that cloud, and bring us back to you know some sanity, and make it even better than it was before the cloud. You're a proud member of Sea Angels, women supporting women by she, awarding she grants. Angels. Somebody, there's a typo in there. It's she Angels. Oh, she, yeah, that's right. Yeah. See, <laughs> well, see, 
I was playing off the whole ocean thing. Right. So I, I think you are in this photo, you are a sea angel as well. Oh, <laughs> so I am designating you live on the Gym Masters Show series <laughs> worldwide that Rosalind Kine is a she angel and a sea angel. Look at the <laughs> look at the photo, folks, isn't she? <laughs> but the she Angels, which is really a terrific organization, women supporting women by awarding grants to grassroots, female-funded, nonprofit organizations that provide mentorship, funding, and resources to a diverse portfolio of women and girls' causes. Tell us about that. How'd you get involved? And tell us about some of the actually, incredible work. Actually, I got involved because Monique said to me, you should join this group. She had become a member. And I went to a meeting with her and I loved it. I loved the women of all walks of life and um, people in the industry, people not in the industry, um, but all wanting to do something to bring women back into the fold. And that women, we mean something. And, you know, equality and giving women chances. And they even have women investors for women. Do you ever think of going to a woman investor and say, it's just always men, you know, to bring your project to light or your business to light. Right. Um, and uh, I'm not somebody that can hawk a China to get somebody. I mean, Catherine Gray said to me, you got to learn, Rosie, you, how do you, how do you talk, to talk what you're looking for? I'm still finding that, that piece that's missing. <laughs> <laughs> but it is so great. And we resonate that the vibration of everybody there resonates together. Yeah. And it's so wonderful. And they also made a film called Show Her the Money, which is all about the support of women and by women. And, you know, it's long overdue, the equality of women, you know? Yeah. Yes. It really is long overdue and we've got to fight. It's not that we want to be better. I know men probably sit and for all these years think, oh, we want to conquer them. No, we just want mutual respect. That's right. Yes. And you absolutely. Know? Yeah. That's... And <laughs> see that's why she's a she angel and a sea angel folks <laughs> she she is both you know like i said you're so positive and you believe in so many causes and delivering positive messages which i think is so important and one of them is this which was so well received tell us about this project this I recorded, I actually I was supposed to record Light of Love yeah. first. And uh, this happened in uh, 2016. Uh, but it, what, what affected me with it was the day a certain somebody came down an escalator in 2015 and made a horrifying announcement to most of us. Uh, cause and it wasn't Santa Claus it wasn't <laughs> or the East. <laughs> no, he was as big uh, <laughs> and somebody who should look in the mirror himself before he criticizes somebody else um i just knew that i i that was the first time i had to get active and that was i i came in and i, I said to stefan oberhoff my record producer stefan i need to record this first we have to wait with the light of love this is a, a really important message at this time and um, we, we worked it and we, we, could, we went into so many genres to the song to create it to be something that anybody else has ever done. And also um, I, at the end with loving, you know, people love you, know, save the children, save the people, save this. I went into save the planet, save the ocean, save the dolphin, save, you know, all about our environment and our climate as well. I made it for what was what was needed today. Um, I got, you know, and some of it got, you know, I got threatened by some people. At first, people thought, you know, when they listened to it, they thought I was talking about the, that guy. He's going to save the world. And then when they read what I what I wrote, they realized I wasn't. So I got I got some threats for that. But you know something? It's the truth. It's the truth. And we're living it out today. And, you know, and I uh, pray to God that people wake up. Because you're all about kindness and unity and bringing people together. Not about and, and fear. 
I'm not right. about hatred and fear. And I'm not about somebody lying. Truth. What does Superman say? Truth. Something with truth, honor, and the American way. What was his? his yeah, right. Yeah, yeah right? that's right. Justice and the American way. Justice. Justice. Yes. Equal for all. Nobody is above it. And justice for all. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So that was a great project to share with everybody as well. And uh, and being in these, very, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, huh? Mm. Very she's, she's got the playbills to prove it. It's so cool, <laughs> huh? <laughs> that's, that's, you know, so many incredible accomplishments and so many wonderful things that you've done and you continue to do, Roslyn, again. You are a light of love, and uh, that, that's another great cover. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, they're really the photographers capture, you know, this whole my photographer friend Gene Reed. Uh, does my photos, he's phenomenal, he uses natural light, right? Exactly, yeah, that's a cool one, too. Yeah, you know. He uses the natural light, right? Yeah. And that's, and this one I know is a is a recent one you see, but that's a great and just the 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 shading and the color. It's it's not like bright in your face. There's just a certain depth and warmth and meaning. And he likes he likes textures behind you. Yeah, there's textures and the colors um, are muted, but yet there, which I think is really something not always easy to achieve, but has a really brilliant eye. Really, really nice. Yes, it really is. And I love that cool. one. So your desire, Rosalind, really is in everything you do, but especially with this, with Look of Love and the Island and this fantastic uh, the medley is, is to deliver a message that we should never give up right. on love and, and, and never give up on each other right right exactly make friends with yourself make friends with others you know it's it's a have you, have you made friends with yourself that is one of the hardest things to do isn't it to make friends and I'm, with and my, and my, I'm my own worst critic also <laughs> so I, I you know but i i pardon myself for it and sometimes if i go overboard you know i look to myself to what did i do wrong or what did i you know i always look to myself first but I do like who I've become as a person. I, I like what I've grown to be. Absolutely. Yes. Which is a beautiful person who, you know, loves sharing it with the, the world. We can't say that enough. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that incredible evening that you spent with your sister and your nephew, which was unbelievable. What was that like singing, uh, with Barbara, with the, family, with the family, it was with great. the family. Yes, I love that. Yes, it was great touring with the family. You know, to be with your family, flying everywhere, and absolutely the hotel shopping when you're off, going to eat, catching a theater show, and then being on stage. Ah, oh, in these twenty thousand seat arenas. Yes, unbelievable. I loved it. It was. It was just fabulous. You know, lots of times you're on the road, and it's a very lonely place to be. Right. You know, and that's why you also live for the audience because that's where you come alive. Because then you go to your room alone, you know. Right. <laughs> You're on the road, but uh, this was this was a joy. It was a joy. I love family. I'm a family person. I love every one of my nieces and nephews. I love that, and their puppies. They they are my four legged nieces and great nephews. I I my family is utmost in my mind and my heart. That is so beautiful. Do you have any four-legged? Uh, I used to. I had my little baby Joshi, but I, you know, it killed. It hurt me so when he was only ten. He was a Yorkie. And he used to. He used to travel with me. He came on stage with me when I was yes, in Provincetown. That's right. When I was in Provincetown, the guys would take him from me and put his hair in curlers and bring him out on stage. And I remember saying to anybody, if you heard anything from a puppy in the back by the lighting guy, that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I lost, I put Joshi down in 2000. I haven't been able to get another one of my own, but then my nephew, Jason, got a puppy. And he's oh, older now cool. and he's had some health problems. But I'm going to be babysitting for him this coming. Oh, that's great. But Jason's going to take a little vacation. And what an incredible he voice he has, Jason, huh? Huh? What an incredible he's voice incredible. Jason yeah. has. If anybody hasn't heard yeah. him sing, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Really and he also is such a good human being. Such good a good heart. heart. Soul. Absolutely yeah. right. I love him so dearly. I mean, but all my nephews and nieces, they're that all seems to run in the brought up. They were all brought up to give back. Yeah. And to be good, you know? I mean, it's just amazing. I love it. I am so I there's nothing terrible I could say about my family. I'm very proud of them all. Every one of them. As they are, I'm sure, our view too, Rosalind. Um, what are some other incredible things? Congratulations on all we're talking about now, but what are some other things? coming up maybe down the line that you're working on or that you foresee or that you would still love to do of the many things you've done already. Like I said, I'd love to do that big show with kindness and bringing hearts together. I am in the near future here. I'm starting to work on some music, some original music with Malik. We're working on a duet of an original song that uh, his writer friend, Jeff Starr wrote. And I put them together with Stefan Oberhoff who uh, uh, finished up the song with him. And now Malik and I are learning it to go in and record. And we're working with um, a Latin Grammy winning couple, Pablo and Paulina Aguirre, uh, to hopefully put together something in Latin, like for the Latin market. Spanish, I said to Malik, I said, as long as we're working with Paulina and Pablo, why don't we do something in Spanish? That's perfect. I huh? love language, you know, I mean, I love, and it would be so perfect. And for years, people said to me, you should sing something in Latin, you know, Latin something Spanish, something, you know. Did and you I, take French in school as a kid? I did. I, but, but, you know, the trouble with school in New York was you had to pass the Regents exam. So The Regents, the yes, summer. I remember those. Remember those? those yeah. three hours before, oh, in the heat of summer with no yeah, Right. Hot classroom and, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was mostly grammar and you know and writing. I didn't never had enough speech. Never. So if I'm in Paris, I'll you know pull out a few words here and there. And um, and I did years ago. I did a, a special in France called La, La Grande Affiche, which means the big billboard. And they yeah. brought me into that. It was done by French television, and I was featured between every act from all over the world. So I came on with my 26 pieces. And I did, and I sang there, On écoutant mon cœur chanté. All of a sudden, my heart sings, was the, was the mm. one I did. I love language. Yeah. I, I took an extra language in my last year of high school rather than a science. I took Italian. You took Italian. Again. So I had a year, of, I had five years of French, for which I can't speak enough. I guess if I lived there, I would use it more. Um, I took a year of Spanish before, and this was all because. When I left public school to go to a private school, they didn't have Spanish. So I got 100 in Spanish my first year. And then I went to have to take French. And then I added the Italian because of my love of language. That's so fantastic. Um, Would you, is a book in I the offing? Too. I took German too. You took German to too? I took a little German because, and I sang in German. I sang make your own kind of music in German. Die Bäume sie rauschen, die Vögel sie zwitschern ganz leise. Ich kann es noch nicht glauben, dass du kamst, weil ich nicht ich, ich war allein. Dach nun sagst du, sing noch mal dieses Lied, das uns bei dir verein. Sing die Glücksmelodie, glaub es wird schon unser Leben zu zweit. <laughs> well, our German viewers right now are cheering with Steins. <laughs> I sang that in Germany, in Hamburg, in Hamburg Television. Oh, wow. The show was called Der Goldene Schuss, The Golden Shot, starring Golden Vico Toriani. And um, what was the other the other part of the question? I, I veered off. Well, the way you... <laughs> That's because you're you're a good conversationalist. You've got so many different parts of it. Yeah. Uh, it was just really about you know the French in school, and then oh yes, so the French, and then uh, and then I had to change because the school didn't have Sp uh, didn't have Spanish, and I didn't want to take Latin. Right. So that's how I got to all my languages, and the reason I got to German is because I was singing in German, 
And I went to Germany and they were talking about possibly bringing me in to do theater there. So I studied a little bit, that didn't happen. Mm. But um, of course the show they wanted me for was one I try not to do. <laughs> <laughs> and folks, you can just imagine on your own. right? <laughs> Please, another part, another show. Another. Not that I couldn't do it, but not good for me. <laughs> not for me that way. I don't do it. <laughs> do you miss the East Coast at all? Um, you know, to a point when it's like the leaves are turning color and if I'm there, oh God, yeah, sometimes it's, it's gorgeous, but I really don't miss the crowds in New York. And when I go back there to work, well, see, family, that's when I get to spend time there. But I have to say, I've probably become much more of a Los Angelian um, because I've been here more years. Yeah, I can't, right? I've been here since 1973, June, when I was going to play Las Vegas. We moved, my man, my then manager's wife and I moved to L.A. Uh, June 23rd and June 26th, I opened at the Hilton in the lounge mm -hmm. um, with Sam, with, um, oh, God. Yeah, I can't remember all the names, but I know Bill Medley was there the second two weeks. Well, and um, yeah, it was, fine it, it was minute, different huh? because you would work there a month at a time. You know, not like that now. That was, what, 51 <laughs> years ago? Yeah. Wow. In the 70s. And, I, and Elvis was there. So it was like, you know, Elvis was in the main marquee and, it's, and introducing a new star to Las Vegas, Rosalind Kahn. So that's where I've been living since here, 73. Um, yeah. And it's, it's getting crowded here too. No, no. And since have, COVID. Have you found a good bagel shop there? <laughs> really? Have you found a good bagel shop there? <laughs> no, nothing is like H&H. &H, but, um, but pizza, good pizza. <laughs> no, I'm not a, I don't eat that much pizza yeah. anymore because I watch, I have to watch what I eat. But, um, and I, but I love I love sushi. Mm, I love sushi. Yeah. And, uh, I love you like to meat. cook? Um, I liked when I used to be part owner in a bakery that also catered the Butterfly Bakery years ago. Um, and I learned how to bake then. But because I don't eat it, I don't really bake a lot. And during COVID, I, I cooked more. But yeah, yeah. when I don't have to, I have so many other things on my plate that so many things take time to even make breakfast or some things like oh, then I have to wash the dish and I have to do before I get to this over here. It's just so it's just easier to call it in, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I'll I do order the, I'll order the number nine. You have the address. <laughs> oh gosh. But extra duck sauce thing. this time, please. <laughs> It's a horrible admission to make, but I know. And when I do cook, I pay a lot of attention to make it really good. What's your specialty? What's the Rosalind Kind specialty? If people were coming people, over, what would be the thing that now, they would now want? I can't, say, I can't say what my specialty is now. I don't even know anymore. But years ago, I used to make a really good luxury kugel and rice kugel and rice pilaf and bulgur pilaf on Armenian dishes. Um. And I, I made a couple of great pot roasts with a couple oh. of different recipes from two different friends and I melded it. And I made it because at that time I was dating somebody who was into food. So yeah. I did cook a little. That's <laughs> good. Now everybody's hungry. I love making <laughs> Russian kugel. Mm. Oh. You ever had a good kugel, a noodle kugel? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, when you grow up in the New York area, you have such exposure to all the different, you know, in any city, you have uh, such exposure to all the different cultures and foods and yeah. get to taste and sample all the different cuisines, uh, Thai food, and just so much, which is amazing. Now we're starving. Can somebody make a sandwich quick? I need a sandwich. <laughs> Toast the rye. Um, oh, Roslyn, kind, you are so kind to join us once again. A real yeah. delight. I was thoroughly looking forward to this uh, return engagement here on the Gym Master Show Live series. You really are a sea angel as much as you are a she angel. Thank and, you. Um, as, always are you, as are you. And you speak of love from your heart. You too. You're a, a sea angel as well. 
I appreciate you that. The sea, you come from the sea. I appreciate that. Very kind of you to say that. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned this the last time you were on, but my father, you know, my Irish father from New York City with his wit and wisdom imparted this wisdom onto me when I was seven years old, which you'll appreciate being in these industries. Uh, he said, Jim, or oh, no, I'm the fifth James. So Jimmy, <laughs> remember, now I'm seven and he's telling me this and it holds true today. Whenever anybody says something kind or nice to you, always make sure you thank them for those kind words. Then ask them to please put those words in writing and address it management. <laughs> it's true. Sometimes like I'm on the phone with a company or something and I get somebody who's lovely and I end up talking to them besides the product or whatever I, oh, I call them. Oh, about. Oh, and, yeah. there, and then I end up, yeah. oh, have a beautiful day. <laughs> and it's like, you don't want to get off the phone with me. And I'm a talker yeah. from way back. You can keep the texting. I don't want to text if I didn't have that ever again. <laughs> like, I'm a talker. I'm a, you know, I'm a kibitzer. <laughs> so are you like me when you go in to see your primary care physician, you end up providing therapy to the doctor. My doctor comes in and he has sneakers on and he's going from room to room and he's been doing it for many, many, many years. And he's so we have just a great relationship. We, we end up talking about life and this and that and, and making each other laugh, but I'm always making him laugh. And he comes in, sits down in the, the little stool and goes, Ah, what a day, Dr. Slater. What a day, Jim. You wouldn't believe it. And then I end up providing therapy for my primary care physician. And I said, don't worry about it, Dr. Slater. There will be no copay from this visit. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm consoling the doctor and I'm going there just for the physical or whatever. Right. I, could, I could see you doing that too. <laughs> my, my doctor, who is just like, not, I don't know. We heard that he's not quite retiring, but he couldn't. We're not going to have him like we had him before. And uh, every time I go to the office, he says, "I I love you. I love when you come." <laughs> you know? And I and I sometimes like am a little bit like a neurotic when you think you have something wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, I've got this uh, eye twitch. You know, and, uh... and he'll tell he'll tell me you're fine. You're fine. But yeah. he's, you know, he loves my, he likes my company, he likes to see me, but he thinks I'm a little bit sugar too. <laughs> <laughs> well, never do what I did. He's and my mother actually told me to throw it out. Uh, no. We had an, we, there was an uncle years ago that had passed yeah. away. Uh, and somehow I was, you know, uh, I don't know, I was just obsessed with what he passed away, which, which was a colon cancer, but he wasn't a blood relative. He was married into the family. So I went out. I think it was about 27 years old. I went out to the store and I bought the big red AMA book, American Medical Association book. And you look at that and you see all of the symptoms. And if you have this, you might have that. If you have that, you might have that. And, and I kept, and my mother said, get that book out of, throw that book out. You know, you, you you have a little twitch in your eye. That could be, if you yeah. do this, that could be this. And you know, like, it's the worst thing, right? <laughs> that was it. That book, long gone. That you was. Sure you wish on you? <laughs> you know, when you're from New York, it's everything. Oh, Manish, my. Manischewitz. <laughs> oh, Lord, I tell you. That's it. But what I love about my doctor is every time you would come in for your annual and you take your blood, then after that, he would offer you coffee and a piece of Entenmann's. Oh, Entenmann's. We grew <laughs> up We grew up with the Entenmann's, right? That was always a, a treat. <laughs> the Entenmann's. Oh, boy, those yeah. little chocolate chip cookies. Um, Rosalind, absolutely. Congratulations on everything. The music, the video, uh, all that's to come. You really are a star. This is a wonderful shot we dug up. Uh, backstage at the uh, it's the Emmys, right? 
At the daytime Emmys, yes. Eight daytime Emmys. That's just a wonderful shot. You've been doing this for a long time. You love it. You've uh, affected the lives of so many and you still do. And I just want to personally thank you for spending this time with us here. As I always said, and I said it the last time, the porch light is always on for you. You're welcome back to stop by the Gym Masters show to have a chat anytime you like, my friend. And I really loved it. And I hope you enjoyed the time with me as much as I absolutely have with you. I most certainly did, sweetie. I really did. We always have a good time. We really do. Thank you for having me back. The pleasure is all mine. Continued blessings and joy. I hope you get that sitcom. <laughs> We're rooting for you there. Who do, we talk to? Who do we talk to? I don't know. Right, exactly. Let's make some calls here. Um, a sandwich and a sitcom stat, please. Um, and keep us posted. You know, if there's tours and other things coming up, we'll be very happy to spread there are, the word. There are, for you. there are some things that Malik has going that uh, he's written me into that I'm, I've got the writer put me in. So th there might be. There might be an offering of the sitcom. That's uh, very, very cool. That's one thing, but that's Keep you know, I don't like to talk about things when they're not. Really that, that they're not. You got that from your mother. You got that from your mother. Exactly. Uh, Roslynkind.com is the website, and of course, on social media is there as well. Once again, Rosalind, thank you very much for gracing us with your presence and your wit and wisdom. Congratulations on all, and come see us again, okay? I'm coming. What, what are you doing next week? <laughs> I'll be sitting right here waiting for you. <laughs> you be well. Keep smiling. Keep Bless laughing. You. And keep spreading the love, my friend. I will. You too. Bye-bye. Right. Rosalind Kind. Wow. What an epic conversation. What a beautiful person, as I said, you know, in the introduction. Uh, she's the real deal. She wears her heart on her sleeve. And we are so happy to have an opportunity to chat with her again. This is her return engagement here on the Gym Master Show Live series. We wanted to talk about, and if you didn't catch us earlier in the show, we actually showed some clips from the breathtaking video that she created and produced with her epic team. And it's really something very, very special. And you can actually see it on YouTube. I encourage you to go and uh, check it out. It's something that she really worked so hard on. Again, she has not been idle during the crazy times of the last few years, producing and releasing songs such as Save the Country, which we talked about, Light of Love. It only takes a moment, Kiss You Now, just in time for Valentine's Day. She debuted and realized the musical dream that she had which was combining the two hits, the uh, of course, Look of Love, fabulous song, and The Island. And that resulted in a medley that celebrates love in all its forms while reinforcing the beliefs that love can be found at any age. She's so proud and excited to be offering that, uh, that video and the music. And she stars in it and served as producer. And uh, what great stories too, not just about that but of course you know her iconic career and all of the music and all of the laughs her time on uh, ed sullivan i mean we really went back in time you know sprinkled it in a little bit from then and now uh she really is a and i mentioned you know she angel but also a sea angel in many ways because she just and we designated her that on the gymnaster show uh she just sees life in a deep way, in a meaningful way. And, you know, when you see somebody, and I know a lot of you watching who are big fans of Roslyn, of Rosie, um, you're happy to hear that. You're happy to see and hear and experience her, express her way, you know, in such a deep way. Oftentimes, you know, you'll, you'll hear people talk about certain things about love and meaning and deepness. And, and sometimes it seems like it's just, scripted or it's part of the branding or it's what's in vogue now. So follow, you know, whatever the flavor of the month is. This is, she's been living this all her life. This is, you know, it's been instilled from family. She talked so beautifully about the love of family and friends and the importance of it. And she weaves all of that into everything she does. And we are the ones who benefit from 
that time and attention. And what a great sense of humor, right? Extraordinary sense of humor. I just want to take a look at some of our viewer comments. We're very interactive here at the Gym Master Show. And we've been getting so many incredible comments. And thank you. This is in our Lovety Hall chat room. Don't forget, you can comment as well on the YouTube channel if you enjoyed this episode. It is archived. You can watch it again and again. We save it on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Don't forget to give this episode a thumbs up like, share this episode, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, share the levity, and leave a comment if you enjoyed this. What uh, you know? song do you love that Rosalind has had an opportunity to present to you? And what did you love about this conversation? We absolutely loved having her here on the show. We're going to take a look at some of the comments coming in here, Fast and Furious, uh, coming in live. Kathleen Walker in New York City says, great show. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Kathleen. So happy you're watching. And so nice to see you, Pam Stubbs, watching in Maryland, USA. She's a star in her own right. Yes, she is. Mona is watching in Louisiana. Wow, she is beautiful. Absolutely, inside and out. Jane watching in Sweden, where it's very late into the wee hours of the morning, but she's a trooper. Thank you, Rosalind, for being here tonight. This has been a great show. Thank you, Jim. The pleasure is all mine. Really, really appreciate this. Pam has been a fan of hers for years, as was your mother. Appreciate that as well. Alice Tucker, thank you for watching Alice. Her live lovely comment here. Lovely interview. Enjoyed it. The pleasure is mine and Rosalind's as well. Maureen says here, coming to us from Arizona, and she says, thank you so much for returning to Lovety Hall, Rosalind. This has been a wonderful conversation. I'll meet you in Sedona someday, okay? God bless you. Uh, Maureen, of course, is a semi-retired nurse. She was supposed to retire a long time ago. She went back into nursing in Phoenix, Arizona. Big fan of our show. Kathleen also adds, thank you for being here, Rosalind. This has been great. Uh, Jeff Perks says, loved this. Thank you very much. Give it a like, comment, subscribe, share. The Lovity and uh, Howard is here. Howard Tucker says, great interview. Jim and Roz, thank you very much. And that's why we call them conversations, even more than interviews, uh, conversations, because they're a little bit deeper than just, you know, interview is just a question, answer, question, answer. It's predictable. We have conversations uh, that are warm and fun and free flowing. Howard also says, we loved your um own kind of music in German. I was able to get it on eBay with Rosy singing. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, she sang in German for us too, as well. And uh, Marianne Lapinto says, I too am from Flatbush and I used to spend summers going to the playground in New Kirk Avenue where you lived. We both uh, loved Shenley's Bakery. We talked about that a lot. Mona loved the pictures. Yes, those photos courtesy of Rosalind Kind. We appreciate that as well. Maureen's so glad that Rosalind was back on our show. And Mona uh, says, you've been busy. So glad that she's back. Maureen, thank you very much. Maureen even did a super chat in support of the Gym Master Show Live series. Thank you so much. And she adds, Rosalind, you truly have a beautiful heart. The world is so lucky to have you. I just want to give you a tight Lovety hug, Jim Master Show, lovety hug. She's received that. And thank you for that, Maureen. That is so beautiful in my beautiful Irish green. I love it. That's so kind of you, Maureen. We really appreciate that. And, and everybody here that is just in Austin Field saying another excellent show, subscribe for more content. We appreciate that. And uh, more piling in here. Veronica Lee says, well, thank you for sharing your journey with us so generously. Yes, she did. Uh, Howard says she was great in the nanny episode. Yes, yeah, she's been on some of your favorite TV shows. And yeah, wouldn't it be great if she was on a sitcom? She That would be hilarious. I'd love to go to the taping of that, if that happened. Um, yeah, uh, you love you loved all the photos as well, the black and white images, and so much more. 
that's so nice. And yeah, this was great. You guys are terrific with your wonderful comments. Uh, Howard Tucker says, uh, hi, Rosie. Yes, love George. And he was, uh, of course, George Harrison, cared for by a doctor here in uh, Staten Island. Very, very nice. Really terrific, terrific comments coming in here. Um, such a big mission that uh, she is on. Yes, spreading love and kindness. We need everyone to take on the same mission. Uh, Mona saying that in Louisiana, and you're so right. And Veronica Lee is saying, good day, uh, Jim Masters and Loverty. Veronica is, uh, Veronica Lee is watching in Australia, one of our Australia faithful. We have viewers all across the United States, Canada, Europe, Asia, uh, Africa, Australia, New Zealand. We really love it. Sherry Larson watching here. Uh, as well. Thank you, everybody, for all of this. And again, you can also comment on the YouTube channel as well. She is such a sweetie. She is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can't argue with that, gang. And really a sweetheart of a person. And she spent some good, solid time with us. We really appreciate that. And Lisa Rodrigo sending her love as well. And Maureen absolutely loved the video. Watch the video in its entirety and uh, listen to the music and just that, I mean, that adds the extra component to it. Um, we just sprinkled in a teased you with the video, but just, you're gonna love it. It really, we watched it several times today and it's, it's so meaningful, but it's beautifully shot, you know, and the production value is, is so spectacular. Uh, Jeff Perks adds in here and thanks for the comments and welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live. Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. Jeff, such a sweet lady. She has actually corresponded with me on Facebook. That's wonderful. I played happy birthday to her on the piano and she got back to me about it. So impressed with that kind and sweet soul. That is so beautiful. Uh, Maureen says, uh, you're a one busy lady. Uh, hope you can join us again. Absolutely. And Veronica Lee says, um, thank you, Jim, for bringing us your chats with such fascinating, inspirational guests. The pleasure is all mine. And uh, yeah, this is really nice. And Kathleen, super sticker. Thank you. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you, Kathleen. They're in Queens, New York, in New York City. The Queen of Queens, Kathleen, uh, who works with the New York Mets baseball team. So you're going to be busy real soon. Let's go Mets. Uh, Mets because my father uh, has always been Brooklyn Dodgers. So when the Dodgers left New York City, everybody went with the Mets. <laughs> That's where the Mets comes in. Thanks, gang. We love you all. Thanks for being with us. Um, continue the comments. Again, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to wrap up here. And uh, don't forget, if you want to check out some of the amazing past episodes of our show, we did a wonderful tribute to the 98th birthday of the incomparable Dick Van Dyke with amazing guests. Uh, check that episode out. The incomparable legendary Ann Margaret was with us recently on the show. Stanley Livingston was with us last night from My Three Sons. Tomorrow from General Hospital and so much more. Dan White is going to be with us live 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And there are hundreds and hundreds of episodes you can check out archived on our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for being with us. We love you all. Don't forget, as we always say, take care of one another, love one another, and don't forget to take time for and uh, love yourself. It means so very much. We'll see you on the next episode. Come see us again here at the Gym Masters Show Live. We really appreciate your time. This is Gym Masters thanking you for your time this time. Till next time, we'll see you again soon. Be well. Love you all. And cheers. <laughs>